um, if you've ever played Dungeons and Dragons, it's like there's sort of two sides to it. There's this world full of monsters and uh, labyrinths and traps um, and cities and everything else, uh, but it's all sort of planned and rationalized and uh, and put together with math and there's rules and sub rules and you can make your own rules in addition to what's there. But then the other side of it is that you have your friends and they uh, they come and they play and they just kind of run roughshod over the whole construction. So his balls to his thigh. This is so fucked up. And so, you know, they get into these little roles like, oh, I'm a dwarf and I'm an elf and whatever, but their personality comes through. So it's like an examination of their personality. And, you know, whatever your friends are like, they're probably not like, you know, 12th century adventurers. At least we know what the, the dark blue mushroom does do now. An extra it makes you depressed, you and we're for sure that the red one now makes you speak the shroom language. So if and you, you can still communicate with us. Exactly. Right? So if you eat the pink one, you might be stimulated and undepressed. That's Maybe. true. Yeah, I think I'll stay depressed. Like, uh, you know, the people that I know and who I make art about uh, in LA, uh, my friends are, you know, mostly strippers and porn actresses. So, you know, that's who I play D&D &D with. But, you know, they have, like, there's this great contrast between people's personalities and the roles that they're supposed to be playing and this rational world that everything's supposed to fit into and the sort of irrational, expressionistic universe of, you know, from the inside of somebody's head. What seems to be the problem, Missy? I just want to hire some mercenaries. Why are you covered in blood, may I ask? <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's why I want some mercenaries. <laughs> and so I think you can see both those sides of what I'm interested in in my work. You know, there's a world and everything kind of makes sense in that world or has a place. Um, and then there's these sort of people who come in there like, and they just make everything go haywire. But I'm interested in examining them both. I think that it should also probably be said that most of the artists who make work that has, you know, that are here tonight probably grew up in the 80s. And the thing about the 80s from art perspective is it was the absolute nadir of art. The, the worst art that was ever made was made during that time. And that was what was popular in the fine arts. And so I think people who are interested in visual culture were looking elsewhere at that time. Uh, you know, they're looking at comic books or TV or something else. And D&D &D was definitely one of those things where there was a whole different visual culture besides, you know, people just making their bold statement about how they didn't like Ronald Reagan. Um, into a little stupid minimalist painting with some text underneath it. So, yeah, there's that. Uh, and I think that, you know, much in the way that, like, in the turn of the last century, the people were all sort of, they had grown up with the image of Piero, the, the opera clown, so there was, like, all kinds of art about him. Um, people of our generation grew up with this sort of series of, rock and roll symbols uh, and D&D is definitely one of those things or it was interesting in some way uh, that was very it was interested in the way art is interesting so I think that's why you know people make art about it still